what's up team if I'm looking sleepy it's because I am my eyes is heavy today we doing something different somebody had a question and three questions I believe and we're gonna answer them to the best of our ability and if we can't answer something we'll just say we can't answer it, but we'll get back to you. We can't answer it right now, but we'll get back to you. Anyway, somebody had a question about the marriage bed being defiled. And I want to say, and you can find that in Hebrews 13 in the fourth chapter. What I want to say about that is, When the writer of Hebrews speak of the bed not being defiled, understand this, that this is not God's way of telling you anything goes in your bedroom. God is not saying, telling you how to have sex. What the Hebrew writer is telling you is there's three different beds and only one of them is not a sinful bed before God but the other two are sinful before God. That's why the Bible says marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled is undefiled because it's not sin. It, it, marriage is a covenant. God ordained marriage. So it's not sinful. This is why he's telling you the bed is not defiled. But then he says, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. He's talking about three different beds. The first bed is a marriage bed. The two are one. They have a covenant. Marriage is ordained by God. Their bed is not sinful. This is what he's saying. But he says, the whoremonger, I'm going to judge the whoremonger because the whoremonger is having relations, is having sex outside of marriage. Then I'm gonna judge the adulterer because the adulterer is married but having sex outside of the marriage. So this is why he's telling you the bed is undefiled between the married couple. He's not saying anything goes. But as long, let me tell you something. If you're married, you're well within your rights. Now understand the scripture not telling you anything goes in the bag. The scripture is not saying that. But if you are married, you have a covenant before God, y'all one. Y'all well within your rights to do as you please in your bedroom. It's sacred. As long as it does not involve an animal or another human being. You're well within your rights to do whatever you want. That's your business. That's not telling you anything goes. I know that's how we use the scripture in the church. The bed is undefiled. The bed is undefiled. I can do this because the bed is undefiled. The bed is undefiled. No, you can do that because that's your husband. That's your wife. Y'all do as you please. But this scripture is not talking about that. And something else the young lady was talking about. Submission. Do you really have to submit and obey your husband? And I'm going to answer that with a question. The Bible says the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And I ask you this, do you have to obey Christ? Do you have to obey Christ? That's the question I ask you. Because the Bible tells the wife more than one time to submit. Submit unto your own husbands. Wives, submit to your own husbands. In everything. 
You are subject to him. Your husband is your leader. Remember that because a lot of people, a lot of women have a problem with submission. That's why the Bible saying wives submit unto your own husbands, because a lot of women have a problem with submission. But you got to remember that man did not set the order. God set the order. God set the man over the woman, the head. Now, anytime you can't, like I said before, anytime you can't submit unto something, you resist it. You fight against it. That's why the Bible says submit unto God. And resist the devil and he will flee. Because when you submit to God, you resist Satan ways. When you submit to Satan, you resist God ways. So he's saying submit to your husband. Don't resist him. Don't fight against him. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he may present it to himself. You know what I get out of that? That's so powerful, this is what I get out of that. Whatever fault your wife may have, this is what I get out of this now, whatever fault your wife may have or shortcomings, you don't beat her down about it but that you speak life into her. You wash her with the word. And see where it says that he may present it to himself? You wash her with the word. You say what you want to see till she become what you say. Do I have to have sex? Should a husband be trying to have sex with you while you're sick? <coughs> As a matter of fact, I don't even have to read this because I know the whole chapter by heart. But 1 Corinthians 13 chapter, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not our own, is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Well, hold up. Let me back up. Seeketh not her own. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not evil to provoke. Thinketh no evil. Let me go back to that. That's where, that's where I wanted to go. Seeketh not her own. Love is not selfish. First of all, th this is how I'm going to answer your question. Should the husband be trying to have sex with you while you're sick and you don't want to? Love is not selfish. Love is selfless. First of all, if I love you, then it's, it's not about me. It's not pl about pleasing myself and, and, and wanting to get off. I want to nurse you back to health. I want you to be healthy. And then we both can enjoy each other. My love ought to benefit you. I ought to see, I, I should have a desire to see you get well. I should be praying for you, laying hands on you, and seeing you get healed. Not looking to please myself. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envy of not. Charity vaunt of not of self. Is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. I love that. It's not self-willed. It's not selfish. Love is not about me. Think, but look at Christ. He gave himself. It wasn't about him. He did, he did that for us. He could have stayed in glory. But anyway, that's why I just wanted to go over. Just wanted to go over those. Submit unto your own husbands. As unto the Lord, a lot of women have a problem with submission. Yes, your husband is your leader. Should you obey your husband? Should you obey Christ? If you should obey Christ, you should obey your husband because God set the order. God set the order. When God came into the garden and he knew Adam ate from the tree, the first person in the garden 
he went to was Adam. Not just because Adam was a man, but also because Adam was the highest ranking individual in the garden. He goes to Adam and asks him, what have you done? I ate from the tree. The woman that you gave me, gave me from the fruit of the tree and I did eat. Bow. He goes to the woman. What did you do? The serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Bow. He goes to the serpent. Now God is handing out judgment. Notice how God is going down the chain. Now he's handing out judgment and now he's going back upward. Why? Because Adam was the highest ranking individual in the garden. Adam is the head. He curses the serpent. He pronounced judgment on the woman. Then he comes to Adam last. He speaks to Adam first. He speaks to Adam last. God set the order. God made man the head. That's the reason why the serpent went to talk to the woman. Because if I get you to step out of the covering of your husband, I get you to sin against him and God. And that's exactly what the woman did. But anyway, submit to your husband. Because if you don't submit unto your husband, you resist his will. You resist his will. Now, as far as the sex thing, I can't tell you what to do. When you are sick, because that's your husband, and that's your house. But as for me and my house, I want to see my wife well. It's not about me. It's about us. The two shall become one flesh. We are one. But anyway, I'm about to go. I pray somebody enjoy this. I pray that somebody was blessed by this. Anyway, deuces.